हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल टुडे वी आर डाइविंग इनटू द वर्ल्ड ऑफ हार्डवेयर इंटरप्ट विद द प्रायोरिटी इन लास्ट लेक्चर और इन लास्ट वीडियो आई हैव डेमोस्ट्रेटेड यू हाउ टू यूज दिस जीपीआईओ इंटरप्ट हाउ टू कॉन्फिगर जीपीआईओ इंटरप्ट how stn32 handle this type of interrupt how it serve what is interrupt subroutine and today i will demonstrate you the concept of priority interrupt priority so when multiple interrupt simultaneously generated how microcontroller handle those interrupt based on the priority so for today's video i'll just extend it the last circuits so from single hardware interrupt pin to now we have two different hardware pin where i configured the interrupt so in last video only pa9 was there but this time i have also uh, configured pf pb14 which is another pin on which interrupt will be configured so whenever interrupt signal will come to this pins mm -hmm. microcontroller will automatically understand that this interrupt is generated and it will handle the condition it will serve the interrupt based on our user defined function so this is what uh, we will see in today's video and this is the circuit okay uh, so for second pin pb14 i am going to use another switch So right now I'm just using separate switches for this both the interrupt, but ultimately we will only use single switch to understand the concept of priority. Okay, so this is this circuit, and I also use UART. So I will tell you why this UART I have used. What is the purpose of this UART? Uh, but let us now just consider that one UART is also there on PB6 and PB7. so i have selected the hardware let us start the configuration part so first of all we have to select the crystal then as per our last videos hardware interrupt or external interrupt was there on pb9 pa9 right so just select pa9 this external interrupt and in this video we are using pb14 also so pb14 is also having external interrupt pa10 should be gpio output pa11 also gpio output and pa12 also gpio output because we have three leds pa10 pa11 and pa12 right along with this we will also going to use uart i am just configuring this uart and you can see as this is uart 1 so i have to simply enable this from the disable to asynchronize interrupt as a uart so now that is what the configuration part now let us uh, work upon the interrupt part so simply check this gpio so we have this for five different gpios and out of this five two are having interrupt signals right external interrupt so just modified those two pins and as our last video we have seen that the interrupt will trigger on falling gauge so today also we are doing same so interrupt will trigger on the falling gauge only right so let us say our switch is connected with this uh, pin so when i will press this switch okay uh, the this pin we have low to high voltage so it's rising as you can say but when i will release this switch it will be falling it because now voltage will fall from 3.3 to 0 so on the falling edge only interrupt will triggered and hardware will serve the interrupt only and only during the release part 
or you can say do, during falling gauge right so i will configure this uh, as a falling gauge so let us modify first interrupt pin and set interrupt mode falling gauge and pull down okay pull down why because when switch is not switched zero volt should be there on the pa9 then and then when i will press this switch automatically it will generate uh, you, you can say high volt on this pin okay so by default we want pull down condition that's why it's pull down same way same selection for the second interrupt also trigger and pull down okay now this is not the end now we have to check this nvic and we have to enable both the interrupt so you can see these two external interrupts are there so p line 5 to 9 so this is our pa9 interrupt and 10 to 15 so this is our pa <coughs> pb14 interrupt and one more thing you have to remember this is the priority so right now you can see both interrupts are having same priority i can change the number but let us assume that right now both are having same priority or let us say i'm just selecting this pb 40s priority higher than this means the number is higher actually the number is higher means priority is lower so right now for the pb 14 the priority is 3 so 0 means highest priority so whatever uh, pin having 0 it means priority is highest so from this selection I can say that my PB14 pins interrupt priority is lesser than PB9 pin. So if both the interrupt will come simultaneously, hardware will definitely serve first this PA9 pins interrupt and then it will uh, serve this PB14. So right now I'm just setting this priority. Okay. And now let us generate the code. Meanwhile, you have to also remember that same functions will be there in this uh, demonstration also. Set priority. So today we will check this function. Today I will set this also manually. Enable interrupt, which we have already covered this IRQ handler. And this is most important part. This is user defined callback functions. So we need to, uh, you know, define these functions. So when interrupt, uh, generated how hardware should handle it so we have to write the logic in this user defined function only okay so now i think code is ready so let us open this main.c file and as i already discussed in the last lecture last video that whatever interrupt you have configured you can see this from it.c just open this file and here you can see our both interrupts are there right external interrupt 95 and 1510 so we are configuring two interrupts so here you can see two different functions are there okay both irp handlers are also there now let us modify this main function main file so what happened when interrupt generates we have to simply write callback function right so this is our user defined callback function okay and its argument is pin number right right and now we will simply check the pin okay because now we have two interrupt so we have to check this gpio pin so from which particular pin the interrupt is triggered right so in last video i will just uh, write this simple logic so if the gpio pin is equal to equal to gpio 9 right okay then some logics uh, will be there in same way we have to check this for pb14 as well 
then some logic will be there. The logic is like by default, uh, our single LED will toggle, which is pill number 11. So, for that, we have function HL GPIO toggle pin GPIO A. This is port number, and this is pin number GPIO pin. 11 okay and delay okay so this is our default process so whenever i simply uh, press the start button this led or this pin number pa11 will continuously toggle so this is our normal process right Whenever interrupt will generated, so this function will call, and this function is having two logic, two different uh, if loop. So if the interrupt will come from pin number nine, so we want to toggle our pin number ten, right? We have to toggle pin number ten. So simply write pin number ten. Okay, and uh, if the interrupt will be there from pin number 14, so just toggle pin number 12, which is our new LED. Right, that's it. And as we are configuring UART also, so let us simply transmit any single message. So just define the message, any message. This is, this is from pin 9 and another message is this is from pin 12 okay and both messages should be transmitted on the UART so for that function is HAL UART transmit and we have four argument first one is the handler of the uart so we have this uh, uart1 second is your message third is length of the message and fourth one is a delay so just write hal max delay okay And now we have to typecast this message. So for that, let us type u int 8 t right? And length means str len. It will uh, return the length of the message. And same way, this also. So when the interrupt will come from pin number 9, it will toggle pin number 10 and it will send this message on UART that this is from pin number 9 and this is from pin number 12. Now let us build the target, debug that code, check for any possible error. If error is not there, we will release the target, we will generate the hack file, we will load the hack file on our board and then we will start execution. Then we start simulation. So this will be the flow. Okay. So for now we will simply ignore the warnings right now let us release the target so it will generate this folder let us simply copy this path so still this release folder will not have hexadecimal file we have to enable this from the project setting 
but I am just copying the path so that I can simply use this path in Proteus Simulator. So now click on the project property here post build select this part x file and now release the target now this release folder should have hexadecimal file right now it is not there but this is you can see the hexadecimal file is there now load this file on our hardware right now let us run the simulator so now as per the logic this is our continued process this is from while one loop now here you can see no interrupt is triggered so normal process is executing by the processor now let us say this interrupt will generated or it triggered so you can see this led is on and here message is there this is from pin number 9 then we let us say this interrupt is triggered and now this is this led is on and this message is there pin number 12 again if this interrupt will generate you can see when i release this switch interrupt is covered by the processor because the interrupt will only trigger on the falling edge right so this is what for the multiple pins interrupt now let us modify this logic instead of two switch let us put a single switch so here what i am trying to do i am just using single switch to trigger both the interrupts simultaneously and now how this microcontroller will give the priority which interrupt will served first Right. Yes, there must be some sequence. Okay, so let us check. Press, release. So you can see again, press, release. So this is not random stuff. You can see always pin number 9 is having higher priority than pin number 12. Why? Because from our logic, if you can see the code, this function. Okay, so pin number 9 is having 0. So 0 means highest priority. So that's why pin number 9's interrupt will, will serve first. Now let us increase this priority from 0 to 7. So now as per this <coughs> set priority functions, the priority of PB14 is higher than the priority of PB9, PA9. I'm just changing the priority. And now here this sequence should be reverse. Okay. So now hex file is there. Simply reset this. Now let us trigger the interrupt. And you can see priority is different. This time priority of PB14 is higher than the priority of PA9. And that's why this sequence is reversed. So this is how you can set the priority and this is how microcontroller handle the priority execute this subroutine upon request this is what for this video in future video i will show you the interrupt more with this different hardware like uart i2c spi you will add more pins with this and understand how to design complex process with this interrupt so this is for for this demonstration if you like my video then please like my youtube videos share it with your friends subscribe my channel thank you thank you very much